to my little friend. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Moore's Bowlers and Guns. Yes, I know. I'm doing like videos every day because every day I'm getting new parts for my AR-15 budget build. Welcome to part five of my series of putting together my first AR-15 build. As you've seen from the uh, last four episodes, uh, my intention was to build the rifle with decent parts, but try to keep it under $500. But ambidextrous uh, safety selectors, rifle scope combo with a red dot sight, fake uh, suppressor, all that other stuff, thwarts in stock, extra mags, all that. I'm over $840 now, whatever, you know what I mean? As you saw from yesterday's episode, to make my barrel uh, New York State compliant, I had it pin and welded with a fake suppressor on it, 16 inches barrel length. So uh, last night's episode aired and a bunch of subscribers uh, had some great comments about it. Um, one guy said, hey, you've got a illegal item still on there. I said, really? I'm pretty well versed in New York State compliance on feature lists, uh, the feature list uh, option, you know? What could it be? Let's see if you guys can figure it out. So here it is. Looks pretty good, huh? Fake suppressor makes it look like an SBR. For those of you who don't know what an SBR is, means short barreled rifle. A short barreled rifle is not considered a rifle because it's a short barrel <laughs> under 16 inches, which is not New York State compliant. If it goes less than 16 inches on your barrel, it becomes an SBR or a pistol, in which case in the state of New York, you need a pistol license to own it. Otherwise, you'd have to go and register it. And we're not registering nothing, right? Anyway, so this gives it an appearance that the barrel is only about that short and it has a silencer on it. But in reality, it is just a shroud that is covering the existing barrel. This is the original 16 inch barrel right there. And all it does is just weigh down your rifle, but it makes it look tactical. Uh, anyway, I'm very well versed in how the feature list rifles are, what you have to do to make a rifle New York State compliant, as long as you want a detachable mag. If you pin your mag, you can have whatever evil features you want on it. Four grip, angled grip, you can't put a silencer on, but uh, you can have a adjustable stock, you can have a regular pistol grip, you can have all that stuff but you'd have to pin your mag. I know tons of people who have pinned their mags here in New York and it's a pain in the ass to load. A lot of jams, even if you have the mean uh, quick load thingamajig, it's still a pain in the ass, so I definitely did not want that. Uh, I definitely wanted a detachable mag, so I have to have a Thorson stock on here, so it takes care of the pistol grip as well as the um, movable stock option, right? Also, it satisfies the thumb hole rule because it's not a closed hole not a closed hole the buffer tube is not connected to the stock so it's not legally a hole which makes it legal 16 inch barrel and uh, what else on here makes it illegal well given you're looking at the thumbnail in the title of the video you'll know that what did I forget that's right the bayonet lug is not allowed you're not allowed to put a bayonet on your rifle here in New York. Honestly, being that this suppressor is pinned and welded on here, you couldn't get a bayonet on here anyway. But nevertheless, this part has to go. Just this stub right here. This part has to go right there. If I'm covering it with my hand, that's what it's supposed to look like. It doesn't have this blob of uh, aluminum here or steel. So the challenge is, how am I gonna grind this off without damaging the surrounding areas? I've, I have a grinder with a cutting disc. I've got a five inch grinder and I've got a three inch grinder. I could very carefully, slowly, from the top, go and cut it off. 
but it's a challenge because now I have this fake suppressor on here, which is pin and welded. This thing is permanently here on the barrel. I can't even take this off to have room to cut that off. So this is gonna be like a surgical um, maneuver here to try to cut this blob off without damaging the surrounding areas with scratches and grinds and all that. But I'm gonna give it my all. I'm gonna wrap this part up with some blankets or something so it doesn't get damaged. Maybe cover this up too and just expose this. And we'll try to get, uh, we'll try the, uh, the grinder and try to slowly mill this off. So I, take, I took the uh, rifle scope off, I wrapped it with a blanket, put it in my vise. I taped up the area where I don't want scratched. And I've got Gorilla tape all over the barrel here, and over here, and on the side there. Kind of like when you go get surgery, they cover up every part of your body, leaving a little area just for where you're working on. And then I'm gonna put this glove over this barrel shroud here and uh, tape it down so I don't want to damage it, you know? Uh, it's gonna be kind of challenging because of the space that I have here. And um, I do have a three inch grinder, but I just have a feeling that it's not gonna work because I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna eventually touch this side or this side, trying to get as low as possible. So what I think I'm gonna try to do is just take the grinder and go down and cut this part that's sticking out like that, right? And then that'll just leave me a little square nub there that I'll slowly chip away at by grinding it off, not cutting it. Because cutting it, I, I mean, I'm going to try cutting it with a uh, three inch grinder. I've got this uh, three inch grinder, right? And if you see, I can kind of go like that and do it. I guess that might work, but it takes, it's going to take a steady hand for sure. So I'm going to put you guys on time lapse. And we'll watch this, uh, we'll watch me chip away at this slowly <laughs> without cutting my hand off. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna take that part off slowly first. Okay, circuit breaker went off. It's over. It's overheating. I've got, I've got it all off almost, and it is steel, not aluminum, because if it wasn't, um, if it wasn't steel, you wouldn't see sparks. Aluminum doesn't create sparks. And that's strong. I mean, I, that's barely holding on. It's still very difficult to, to, to get this part off. And theoretically, I think this could just do it, you know what I mean? But uh, it's ugly for it sticking out anyway. Honestly, I don't care about this bayonet lug. Uh, I wouldn't get a bayonet on here anyway, just for, I mean, unless it was just for looks, you know what I mean? But I'm gonna have to keep grinding, man. Get that part off. So just to get this off should do it, but this is ugly sticking up anyway. I wanna make it just, just want to take this blob right off you know there it is that piece came off it's hot Whew. okay now i'm gonna just grind at this try to get that blob off
Okay, so I had to work out the finishing touches, doing a little bit of hand filing right around here, just to get it all smooth. There was a little edge there. So it came out pretty well. Filed down smoothly, and these are the two lugs, two pieces of the bayonet lug. It's steel, not aluminum, because it creates spark. So I'm going to take some flat paint and just do a spray real quick. It's flat, so it looks glossy right now, but when it dries, it becomes the same color as the uh, site. That ought to do it. So there we go. All fixed. Came out pretty well. I'm pretty pleased. Now we have no bayonet lug on here, so now we're New York State compliant. I uh, never thought about it until somebody told me about it, because I've never owned a... Uh, M4 type rifle before with the A2 sight gas block combo, you know? So while I always knew that there was the bayonet thingamajig, you know, um, I just didn't think about the lug, the mount, you know? So with it cut off completely, it is impossible to mount a bayonet. Uh, even with the lug on there, with this barrel shroud pinned and welded, right? You couldn't put a bayonet on here anyway, you know? And it's a stupid evil feature rule. Because honestly, just because you don't have a mount on here doesn't mean you can't put a bayonet on there. You can make some clamps or something, duct tape, whatever. <laughs> there's a will, there's a way. So it's a stupid rule. All the evil features are stupid rules. But uh, anyway, uh, we do our part here in New York to get the coolest looking rifles uh, that we can do uh, within law. And uh, look, Say what you want about me complying and all that stuff, but look, uh, nothing's worth going to jail for, you know what I mean? Uh, just to have a cool looking rifle. Uh, we can do that by adhering to the rules. And uh, look, you can do whatever you want, but uh, I like my freedom. I don't want to go to jail. So there we go. I uh, mounted my scope back on here again. It's just a quick release, put it on, done. And there we go. No bayonet lug. Thumbnail. <laughs> oh, look what we have here. Quinn the mailman came by and delivered this today. What's in it? Let's open it up, see what it is. It's from ardiscounts.com. This is probably what I need. Ooh. Lesma. Oh, Presma. Presma. AR-15 mil-spec buffer kit. Spring, buffer tube, and buffer with castle lock nut and end plate. Carbide. Has the square thing on the bottom. It's not completely round and cylindrical like a rifle buffer tube. This is a carbine. Um, $25, I think. Look at my list. I don't remember. Thank you, Henry. Dean. Presma AR-15 mil spec buffer kit, $28.45. Anderson lower parts kit with stainless steel hammer and trigger. Cool. So uh, this kit cost $35.95. And then after I bought it, like a few days later, they raised it to $49.95. So I got a great deal. So 40 bucks for the complete lower parts kit and the trigger group. 
and I've got my buffer buffer tube kit right here. <laughs> All I need now, that's right, is my Aero Precision M4E1 lower receiver, which I believe is in Ohio by now. It left uh, Tacoma, Washington. It's in Ohio. Should get to my FFL within two, three days. And then hopefully he'll give me a call. I'll go to his place. We'll do a NICS ATF background check to make sure I'm not a, a nut um, or I don't have any felony convictions uh, or I don't have a misdemeanor in, for a domestic violence or into any mental health uh, institutional visits. Uh, since I already have two rifles, I'm pretty sure I'm going to pass the background check. So anyway, uh, that's it. It's just, uh, we're almost there, man. Now, this is what I was talking about when I didn't like to buy things that you, you're paying for but you don't need. So this lower parts kit comes with the conventional AR-15 pistol grip. Well, I've got the Thordson stock. I never had any intention of using a pistol grip because it's illegal in New York State if you want a detachable mag. Uh, again, if you pin your mag, you can have this, and a foregrip, and uh, um, muzzle brake, uh, A2 a flash hider, uh, movable stock. You can have all that stuff. But you'd have to load your magazines in a really retarded way, you know? So uh, this is just waste because uh, I'm not going to use it, period, no matter what. Um, anybody want to buy it from me? Let me know in the comments. So I uh, look forward to putting this together. I'll need uh, help from my friend who shall remain nameless to come and help me install this lower parts kit and trigger firing group because I have some idea, but he's done a few, so he knows what he's doing, and I'd like for him to come and guide me. Uh, that'll be a fun episode of putting together my lower because that's probably the most challenging piece of my build especially when I'm doing it without a drop-in trigger, you know? Drop-in trigger, yeah, drop it in, two roll pins, and you're done, you know? Or uh, maybe the hex screw kind, but, you know, just drop it in. But this is the more comp most complicated part of it, is the springs, the detents, the roll pins, the cotter pins, all that stuff. Getting it in the right place and making sure that the hammer fires when you want it to in conjunction with the ambidextrous... Uh, Timber Creek is what I bought, a uh, OD green ambidextrous safety selector, which has yet to come, but that'll probably come before the receiver, so we can put the lower receiver together all at one time. Uh, that'll be an interesting video, and then uh, that, then it, you know, once you make the uh, upper with the lower after it's completed, forts and stock on there, you're done. We're done. We're going to have that rifle, and then uh, hopefully sometime soon after that, uh, me and Nameless will go over to our uh, firing range over in Calverton, Long Island, exit 71 in Ridge, Long Island. It takes us about 40 minutes to get there, and uh, we'll go and test it out. That'll be fun. But thanks a lot for joining me on today's bayonet lug mount removal mill. Uh, repaint it, and uh, making that upper now <laughs> New York State compliant, 100%. Um, if you ATF guys are watching, you can tell, yes, I make videos, but you can tell I make videos to ensure that my rifle is New York State compliant. That's important to me because I feel like I'm pretty well versed in it. Um, and then we got our lower parts kit, trigger group, and buffer tube. So we're almost there. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode. We'll see you all next time on mowers, blowers. Wait a minute. If you guys would like to build your own, check out the links in my description where I have uh, links to Aero Precision, Brownells, uh, Stag Arms, Faxon, uh, a lot of great places to buy your parts for your own build uh, and get your mags over at Gun Mag Warehouse. When you click those links and browse and maybe buy something, I might make a couple of bucks. So once again, thanks a lot for joining me on today's uh, episode. Go follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers Guns. See you guys next time. Hey guys, John over here at Turning Wrenches. And uh, we'll see you guys next time on Bowers of Blowers. Hey, I'm
I'm Henry from Mowers and Blowers. As a YouTuber that deals with small engine equipment on a daily basis, I worry about the harmful effects of the 10% ethanol that's in your unleaded gas from your gas station. Here on the East Coast, as winter nears, I think about storing my summer lawn equipment for the winter. Ethanol absorbs moisture, and what it does is it could rust or corrode and clog up your jets in your carburetor. That's why I use Ethanol Safeguard with stabilizers from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Before you store your machines, a little bit of Lucas goes a long way. When you're ready to use your machines again, Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers really appreciate all the support also to keep the videos coming every day support the channel bye